Hello Scatterbenchers and welcome to a new episode. In this video we're going to take a look at AMD's new baby, Ryzen. So for the purpose of this video we are going to use a pre-production Ryzen 7 1800X processor. So this is a 8 core 16 thread processor. Thanks to the XFR or extended frequency range it can boost up 100 megahertz higher to 4.1 gigahertz. In case your cooling of course is sufficient. The 1800X processor is the flagship model of the Ryzen product line and costs about 500 US dollars in retail. Before we move on to the overclocking of this little thing here, let's talk a little bit about the Ryzen architecture. Number one is of course the core frequency. The Ryzen products vary in stock frequency from 3 GHz on the Ryzen 7 1700 to 3.6 GHz on the 8 core 1800X and 6 core Ryzen 5 1600X. The boost frequency of the Ryzen 7 1700 is 3.7 GHz, which means you can get an additional 700 MHz over default frequency. The second aspect of performance is the memory frequency. Unlike on Intel high-end desktop parts, Ryzen has dual channel memory. To increase the bandwidth, we will benefit from higher memory frequency. The default frequency for Ryzen is DDR4-2133. But we have memory ratios available up to DDR4-3200. This is quite a bit lower than DDR4-4000 and higher we can find on Skylake or Cabin Lake, for example. To overclock the memory beyond 3200, we will need to use reference clock adjustments in the BIOS. The last important factor is the fabric. There's not much information available as to how the fabric works exactly, but we do know it connects to the CPU cores with the cache and the memory controllers. In Intel terminology, you can compare it to the ring frequency, though the specific technology is different. Either way, increasing the fabric frequency will impact the performance as well. The fabric and memory frequency are tied directly to the memory frequency, meaning it runs at 1066 MHz by default up to 1600 MHz in case you choose DDR4-3200. Note that there is no automatic memory overclocking feature available such as XMP. AMD used to have the AMP program which is sort of their approach to XMP but it seems not to be available for Ryzen. For more information about Ryzen itself I recommend you go check out some articles online. Most importantly the one from Anantec and PC Perspective. So now let's overclock it. For the overclocking, we will be using the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard along with a pair of G-Scale Trident Z 3400C14 memory and a Cooler Master Nepton 280L all-in-one water cooling. The cost of the system is about 1000 US dollar. You can find the links to the hardware in the description below. We'll break up the overclocking in a couple of steps. First, we will overclock the CPU, then the memory fabric, cache to 3200, then throw it all together and we will finish off by pushing the reference clock up. You can find all the benchmarks and the tools in the description below. To overclock the CPU, we enter the BIOS in the Extreme Tweaker section. Under this section, we leave AI Overclock Tuner to Auto. Under the CPU Core Ratio, we select Sync All Cores and increase the 1 Core Ratio limit to 40.75. Under the CPU Core Cache Voltage section lower down in the menu, we select Offset Mode, increase the voltage to 0.1V. After all this, we save the settings by pressing F10 and go into the operating system. We are in the operating system after overclocking everything, so let's take a look at the performance figures. Keep in mind that we increase the CPU frequency to 4075 MHz. In one cruncher, 1B, we have a performance increase of 9%. In HWBOT X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 9%. In Geekbench 4 single core, we have a performance increase of 2%. In Geekbench 4 multi core, we have a performance increase of 10%. In VRMark Orange Room, we have a performance increase of 6%. In 3DMark Time Spy, we have a performance increase of 1%. In 3DMark Time Spy Physics, we have a performance increase of 6%. If you want to take a look of the actual numbers for each benchmark, check out the description below. Now let's move on to memory overclocking. Now we are back in the BIOS and things are quite simple. Just set DDR4-3200 ratio. Then set memory timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 32. Set memory voltage to 1.5 volts and you are done. 
To save the settings, press F10 and reboot the system. We are back in the operating system after overclocking the memory. Keep in mind that we overclocked the memory to DDR4-3200. In White Cruncher 1B, we have a performance increase of 8%. In HWBOT X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 0%. In Geekbench 4 single core, we have a performance increase of 4%. In Geekbench 4 multi core, we have a performance increase of 2%. In VRMark Orange Room, we have a performance increase of 6%. In 3DMark TimeSpy, we have a performance increase of 1%. And in 3DMark TimeSpy Physics, we have a performance increase of 4%. So that's it for the memory only, now let's try to overclock both CPU and memory at the same time. Let's go back to the BIOS. So we are in the BIOS and here the process is the same. Under the CPU core ratio, we select sync all cores, increase one core ratio limit to 40.75. Under the CPU core cache voltage section, we select offset mode and increase the voltage by 0.1 volt. For the memory it's simple, we set DDR4-3200 ratio, we set the memory timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 32. Set the memory voltage to 1.5 volt. Hit F10 to save the settings and reboot to the operating system. Okay, so we are back in the operating system and we just overclocked the CPU to 4075 MHz and also the memory to DDR4-3200. So let's take a look at the combined performance figures. In One Cruncher 1B, we have a performance increase of 12%. In HJBot X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 9%. In Geekbench 4 Single Core, we have a performance increase of 6%. In Geekbench 4 Multicore, we have a performance increase of 13%. In VRMark Orange Room, we have a performance increase of 11%. In 3DMark TimeSpy, we have a performance increase of 1%, and finally in 3DMark TimeSpy Physics, we have a performance increase of 13%. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier in the video, if we want to reach higher memory frequencies, we need to play with the reference clock. So let's go back to the BIOS and adjust that one. Okay, so our target here is going to be 125 MHz reference clock. We're gonna have to apply the settings in two times. So first we'll apply one set of settings, we'll reboot, go back to the BIOS and apply the last one. So here is how it goes. First, set the CPU ratio to 32.5, then set the CPU offset to 0.1 volt, set fabric to 1.2 volt in manual, set memory voltage to 1.5 volt, set ratio for DDR4 2666, set the memory to 16, 16, 16, 16, 32, and reboot. Once you reboot it, go back to the BIOS again and set 125 MHz BCLK or base clock. Once you adjusted this, press F10 and reboot to the operating system. So we are back in the operating system and we just adjusted the base clock to 125 MHz. So let's take a look at the new performance figures. In White Cruncher 1B, we have a performance increase of 0%. More on that later. In HDABOT X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 9%. In Geekbench 4 single core, we have a performance increase of 9%. In Geekbench 4 multi core, we have a performance increase of 14%. In VRMark Orange, we have a performance increase of 14%. In 3DMark TimeSpy, we have a performance increase of 3%. In 3DMark TimeSpy Physics, we have a performance increase of 17%. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about Ryzen overclocking, make sure to hit the comment section below and share with us your own overclocking experience on Ryzen. If you want to see more content on Ryzen and Ryzen overclocking on this channel, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you don't, hit the thumbs down. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and see you next time. Thanks for watching.